most difficult thing in football is to score a goal, which makes Leo Messi's record, scoring 644 goals for a single club, all the more remarkable. We created a custom Budweiser representing each one of the goals and personalised it to the keeper it was scored against, partnering with the man himself on the plan. Budweiser te ha enviado de verdad una botella por cada gol. And then we waited until the 22nd of December when this happened. Messi. Oh. So Budweiser have a long-standing presence and relationship uh, in football through the likes of their partnerships with La Liga, with Premier League um, and with Leo Messi. And the overarching aim um, from Budweiser's perspective is to establish um, a presence um, in broader football culture. Messi has an incredibly credible list of um, other sponsors and partners. So whenever Messi has a moment in game or out of the game, um, Budweiser wanted to make sure that they had greater share of voice and that they were kind of top of the list when it came to affiliation with Messi in those moments. The only other aspect of the brief from Budweiser to, to us at Copper 90 was to make sure that the product was at the heart of the story. We needed to make sure that you couldn't escape the product and you couldn't talk through the idea without referencing the product. Yeah, and I suppose the kind of specific context of the campaign was that in 2020, Leo Messi was honing in on breaking Pele's all-time record for goals scored for a single club, which was at the time 643. This was going to be a huge moment in football culture, the kind of moment that really only comes along once in a generation in terms of the sheer scale of that achievement. And like Kate says, the, the challenge with a moment like that is that the entire football world is going to be talking about it. So whilst Budweiser has a reason to, to play in that space and has an association with Leo Messi, it's really an uphill struggle to make sure that whatever Budweiser was going to do would actually show up, would actually cut through that noise and, and make any kind of impact that we knew it was going to be really hard to do something that would actually stand out in the crowd. And so we really wanted to find an angle that gave us a unique take on it. And we kept thinking about the people against whom all these goals had scored and looking at the faces on the goalkeepers in the moments of magic that Messi creates. And we were kind of really struck by all of those like moments of shock and awe and the um, just the kind of the wonder on the faces of the keepers at the the superhuman abilities of Messi and and then we started thinking about actually just the sheer volume of people who have been on the receiving end of that Messi magic thinking about the goalkeepers would be a really unique way of paying testament to the kind of sheer scale of that achievement we wanted to pay tribute to all those goalkeepers by creating customized bottles for each one of the goals that he scored and then sending them to each of the keepers against whom he scored them again. So when the goal went in on the 22nd of December, we were ready to strike. We'd been sort of eight months in preparation for that moment. At the beginning of the year, we thought he was on the cusp of um, breaking that record. And then due to COVID and due to the game being suspended for the best part of sort of three or four months, it meant that that record was delayed. And when the goal went in, Budweiser um, innovation team sent out um, a bottle to every single one of those 150 plus keepers and we were also ready from an amplification and an outreach perspective. Yeah that was I suppose like a real key cog in the campaign is that like instantly you had all of these incredibly not just famous and influential but also kind of credible voices <laughs> in the game jumping on board and sharing pictures of themselves with their customized bottles that had been sent to them by Bud. They also had customized what we call creeds, so on the bottle, so a kind of individual messages to each of those keepers, like saying why uh, Messi was sending them those beers and kind of thanking them for their particular challenges that they threw up to him over the years. And as they started posting, other keepers who we hadn't even signed up, but we had sent the bottles to also started jumping on because everyone wanted to to be a part of that moment and to kind of have their place within that record. And at that point, that's I think when we knew we were onto a winner. The key really was in the preparation, a shoot that happened in lockdown, which was unprecedented for, for most production agencies, most businesses, most brands um, at that time, because it was in lockdown one of 2020. So the key to the success really wasn't in the, was in the planning and the, and the preparation. We also had a kind of little tease launch film that went out on Messi's own channels, which obviously kind of kick-started the whole thing. And that was him like preparing these boxes and getting them ready to send out to the keepers. So it were all these different touch points. It was like an instant kind of launch into the world. 
So, I mean, at a moment when everyone should have been talking about Messi, it did truly feel like globally everyone was talking about Budweiser. During that Christmas period, um, bearing in mind the keepers received their bottles on the 23rd or 24th of December, Budweiser was the the number one most talked about drinks brand um, globally through social and through press. Their search um, doubled on social and online um, versus the previous 30 days to the to the campaign going out. And I think the figure is something like 95% of online articles that mentioned brand involvement in that campaign were about Budweiser as opposed to any of the other brand partners. I don't think there were any problems during the initial brief, but the um, the kind of the, the two massive <laughs> elephants in the room were that uh, COVID struck when we were initially, we were still in ideation phase at that stage, so it wasn't like anything changed, but it did mean that the whole process from start to finish was done under COVID conditions, so that obviously gave a lot of challenges. And then also, um, when he was kind of, I think maybe six or seven goals away from the record, he nearly left Barcelona and there was a good chance that having shot and prepped the entire campaign, he actually would have left before he broke that record. But thankfully for us, he stayed for another year, um, broke the record and yeah, made for a very exciting Christmas for us, but a very hard Christmas for our media team. <laughs> In waiting for longer than we'd originally anticipated, we just had to make sure that we were always ready, no matter what day, what hour, where it fell within the season. We made sure that the plan was really clear from five goals out and that everyone had their set copy again, ready to go and under embargoed. So I guess it's not really a case of how we solved the problems because we were never going to get around COVID and, and the restrictions and, and the, the pressure obviously that it put on this campaign in particular, but it was around being ready to go and um, making sure we're working as a team across the agencies and, and with our client partners to make sure that we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. One of the reasons why we feel like it's so successful and why it actually like did the job we wanted it to do is that the, the product was really central to the idea. And I think the fact that you couldn't really talk about the idea without talking about Budweiser obviously was a huge win in terms of um, it wasn't just a great concept that flew well, but it meant that Budweiser's presence and role within it was absolutely central. The thing everyone was talking about was Budweiser. Something that people forget about when they shop local is that their property value is actually tied to those local businesses. We decided to cover all the stores with for lease signs and change the outcome of their businesses.